this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com, and today I want to teach you the efficiency equation. Just recently, a testing strategist on my team who's kind of new ran a test that wasn't very impactful. On closer inspection, I could have easily told him beforehand that this test wouldn't have been successful or very impactful by using the efficiency equation. The efficiency equation will help you evaluate your tests before you run them to help you know if you're going to get value out of your test. So if you're looking to get more value out of the test you run, then the efficiency equation may help you. Thanks for joining me today. This is going to be a great video. Before we dive into it, if you like the content you've seen from these videos, go ahead and hit the like button. You can also subscribe to my channel to get the new videos that I post every Thursday. First, you might be wondering why I call it the efficiency equation and why isn't it an equation that focuses on value or impact or benefit? And the reason is simple. If you can improve your efficiency, you're more likely, likely to get more impact and more value in the long run. The nice thing about the efficiency equation is it's an actual equation that will allow you to plug in numbers to evaluate the success or the failure of the things that you're doing. So before we get into the equation, I want to show you that this testing strategist ran. The test was on a page that doesn't get a ton of traffic, and it was a change in text in the right rail of a very important link that our visitors use. The test had eight different variations. One of them was an existence test to test the value of the link by removing it from the page itself. And the other ones were variations of the words of that link to see if there's better combination of words that would help people use the link to get to the place that, that is valuable to them. Another important part about this test is the link wasn't very prominent. It's in the right rail, it's on the side, it's not very, it's not at the top of the page or in this prominent position. After the test had been running for a while, the numbers came back and they weren't looking very good. There weren't very many visitors and there weren't very many people even clicking on the link. Even after looking at the data for just a few seconds, it was clear that this wasn't that great of a test. But, but the testing strategist didn't realize that this could have been avoided if they would have used this efficiency equation. Now let's talk about the efficiency equation and how it might have helped us evaluate if this test would have been successful or not. The efficiency equation has three different parts. It's efficiency equals population times impact divided by cost. Population is the amount of visitors or visibility that this test will get. As we talked about, the test itself wasn't very visible. It was on the right rail, it wasn't prominent, it was just a small line of text. And also this page doesn't get very many visitors. So the population of this test is low out of the gate. The next value that, that we need to estimate is impact. Impact, I like to estimate by using a methodology, which I'll share in a future video, but it looks at things like real estate, is it an existence test, is it uh, a presentation change or a function change, or is it a text change? There are certain types of changes that we've seen be more valuable over time. Some of them being more valuable and some of them being less valuable. In this case, it was a text change and changing text can be some of the least valuable tests that we can run. Again, I'll share another video about this methodology so you can better evaluate tests and understand the impact that you might be getting. But because it was a text change, that was a signal to me that the likelihood of this being valuable was lower out of the gate. The next thing that you need to understand and estimate is the cost. The cost is simply the man hours or the resources that are needed to get the test live. In this case, it was a very simple change. So the cost was extremely low, and in fact, it was almost nothing because all we were doing was changing some text and making eight different variations of the text change. So that's the efficiency equation. Efficiency equals population times impact divided by cost. You have to know all three of these variables to know if you're efficient in the testing that you're running. Now, it's important to note that pre-test, you want to estimate these values. You can estimate your population by looking at your analytics data to see how many visitors enter the test. You can estimate the visibility of the population in seeing the test by looking at how prominent it is on the page. Is it large? Is it at the top? Is it on the left? Or is it below the fold? You can also estimate the impact by using a methodology, which again I'll, I'll show in a future video. And you can estimate the cost by scoping out the difficulty of the change to make the test happen. The nice thing about this equation though is you can also use it post-test. After you've run the test, you know the exact amount of visitors that enter the test. You know the exact amount of impact or lift that that, that variation or the winning experience it had. And you also know the exact cost. If you're keeping track of your time and effort and resources, you know the cost that was put in to running that test. Um, a cost also might be a trade-off of doing something else. So post-test, you can get a really good read on the efficiency of all the tests you're running because you have the actual numbers. This post-test comparison of efficiency becomes extremely valuable because you can take all your tests and you can compare them to see where you're getting more efficiency and where you're getting more gains because of that efficiency across all of your tests. 
you might find that certain types of tests are more efficient to your company than others. Maybe it's your landing page testing, or maybe it's your, your funnel testing or your checkout testing. And maybe it's your create an account page. When you can analyze the efficiency of all your tests and have a single metric to compare them to, you can very quickly and easily over time get a good read on where you're getting the most bang for your buck. Once you know how to be efficient with your tests, you can then get more tests that are more efficient because you're estimating pre-test and you're doing an exact calculation post-test to know exactly how to get the most efficiency from your testing program. So back to the test we ran with this new testing strategist. You can see that when we plug in the numbers, the efficiency of this test was very low, both on the estimated side and on the actual impact side. You can also see there wasn't enough data for this test. The population for this sample size was so low and the actual click-throughs were so low that we didn't have enough population or impact and there just wasn't enough data to get good results despite the cost being so low. And that's one of the cautions that the efficiency equation can help you avoid. If you focus on any one part of the equation, like, hey, this is a really low cost test, so we're gonna run this test. If, if it's low cost, but it doesn't have a lot of visitors or there isn't a lot of potential impact, whether it's low cost or not, that doesn't help you. As you are analyzing which tests to run, each of these inputs into the equation become important. If you have a high population test, you're much more likely to get good results from that test. If you have a low population test, you're more likely to not have significant results or to not get enough data. And so you're probably wanting to deprioritize that part of that test. Same with cost. If you have a high cost test, by evaluating that, you can compare that to know if it's better to run a low cost test. And of course, most important, you have to look at the impact. Now I realize pre-test, you're always evaluating the impact, but you do want to use patterns that you've seen from your previous tests to understand impact. If you know that in general, but the change in your layout or some type of real estate or layout test is impactful for your business, then you wanna build that into the equation and make that impact number relevant so that you can get a better efficiency number to know if you should run those tests. So that's the efficiency equation. Remember that it can help you pre-test to know which test you should run. After you've run the test and have the actual data, the efficiency equation can help you know how to maximize your testing program by seeing the patterns of high efficiency testing. When you can see that, you can run better tests over and over. As you are diligent in using the efficiency equation, you'll be able to get more value for your testing program, you'll get better conversions, and you'll do better testing overall. Testingtheory.com, where you get better testing and more conversions.